Today we're talking about Chennai, one of those cities in India you've probably never heard of despite the fact that it has a quarter more people than New York City living there. That's right, more than 10 million people. So why am I talking about them today? Is it to offload some underwhelming census data on you? Hey, knowing it's the 6th largest city in India might help you win a bar trivia game someday. Nope, in fact, it's because that huge city is going through a pretty major problem right now. No water. Now if you look at a map, you'd probably think, what do you mean, they're surrounded by water, that's the blue part. But that water is saltier than the comments section on my videos. They do have two desalinization plants working at capacity, but again, this is a huge city, so that's barely scraping the surface of the problem. It's the kind of scenes that you see in movies showing a dystopian future. People fighting for a basic need like water. We're witnessing early warning signs in India's sixth largest city, Chennai. Tokens are being given out to collect water from tankers. In some localities, it's a lottery system to see who actually gets some water. Wow, I didn't realize that John Williams was in charge of scoring the news in India. I swear, it's never a good sign when you can put the soundtrack to a Michael Bay movie in the back under your news and it fits. So okay, as you can imagine, getting water to a city of 10 million people is not an easy task. So today, we're going to look at what happened and what the Indian government is doing about it. Despite the fact that this is an episode where, whew, man, we'll see how funny this turns out. Well, experts are saying this will happen more and more often as the climate keeps changing, so we should probably start taking notes. First, what happened? Well, Chennai sits next to a lake, or sat next to a lake. As you can see, over the past year, the city has lost their most important liquid asset. Problem is, it just hasn't rained, so all their reservoirs are dry. Anytime you have a cocktail of temperatures reaching 104 degrees and rainfall dropping 99% between June 1st and June 19th, well, it's not going to lead to a good result. Now that may have been the linchpin, but I would also be remiss not to acknowledge What exactly causes this problem? It's the lack of mismanagement of water resources, lack of maintenance of water body, and lack of a concrete water management policy. Yeah, the Madras High Court, or the Indian equivalent of a state supreme court, had some choice words for the state's government, saying that there were unplanned urban development projects that destroyed the wetlands around the city. And now that those pesky reservoirs are gone, you have even more land to build on. They also said that there was little or no recycling of water or rainwater harvesting, nor has there been any political will to address the problem comprehensively. Gee, tell me what you really think. Furthermore, India is looking into a bleak future because a recent government backed report has announced that India is suffering from the worst water crisis in its history. And India? Well, it's not a new country. So when they say worst in its history, well, that's quite the accomplishment. Experts predict that 21 cities will run out of groundwater supply by 2020. That includes Delhi, which is home to nearly 19 million people, also known as more than three times the size of America's largest city, New York. So now that I've gotten you nice and terrified the way the news is supposed to, let's get back to today, because right now the crisis is contained to only one about New York's size city population. The taps have been shut off for everybody who doesn't own their own private wells. And the government is getting water to the city the best way they can. At least 500 private tankers are engaged daily to transport water from outside the city to several water starved areas. 400 tankers going back and forth from neighboring cities each day. The only way to describe the fuel efficiency of this program is in terms of oil spills. Still though, there's no water infrastructure connecting these regions, so get those trucks a rolling. Of course, this crisis had led to an interesting economic situation, because if you're fine being the bad guy in some future documentary we're definitely going to make about this crisis, well, you can stand to make a ton of money right now. 
Government trucks are only able to meet part of the demand, leaving the rest of the population at the mercy of private vendors, who appear to be making a killing off of the crisis. I mean, we're talking about price hikes to the point where Whole Foods asparagus water looks like a steal by comparison. Maybe I'll use that to shower, operate my toilet, and drink. Although, make sure you have enough to get your toilet to flush before you drink it, if you know what I'm talking about. Also, yeah, bathrooms are a huge thing nobody thinks about. Right now, people are fleeing their homes in desperation for railway stations and shopping centers in the hope of finding functional toilets and drinking water. Man, just when you thought the line for the woman's room couldn't get any longer, am I right, 90s comedians? So on a large scale, what is the Indian government doing to attack this thing? One of the things they've done is create a new Megazord Water Management Agency by combining several smaller ones. Full disclosure, not even sure I get that last reference. The new Jal Shakti Ministry has been formed by merging Ministry of Water Resources and Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation. That's right, enter everything related to Water Minister and who oh boy brace yourself for this pronunciation, Kajendra Singh Shekhawat. Now, Minister Shekawat's plan is to fight not a policy fight or even an environmental fight, but rather a legal one. You see, Modi's government has identified a solution to this problem, water redistribution. The plan is to take water from this river and pipe it over to the city of Chennai. Brilliant! Why didn't we think of that one sooner? Now, don't worry, because this is politics, so nothing is simple. People have two problems with this idea. First, not going to go into too much detail, but the biggest problem to this is states' rights. You see, India is made up of different states, and you have the state where the water originates, and the state that needs the water. Unfortunately for Chennai, where there is a noticeable shortage of life-sustaining substance, people tend to close their purses pretty quick. Water has been a sensitive issue, and nobody wants to share water with the other state. Demand keeps increasing all the time and the source is dwindling. A state needs to become self-sufficient and not depend on others. Even worse for Chennai, the water dispute was recently litigated in India's Supreme Court last year. And their ruling actually significantly cut the amount of river water that the downstream state where Chennai is a part of has access to. Now I bring up this river dispute partially because there's an upstream downstream fight that seems to be popping up all over India lately. This February we saw. Now the water allotment goes to India, but the excess that it didn't use always flowed into Pakistan freely. India says that's not going to happen anymore. It's going to take that excess water and divert it to its own people and its own projects in Indian administered Kashmir and the Indian state of Punjab. And parts of Pakistan will really feel that because they are prone to drought and really did rely on that excess water. Still, in Chennai's case, the Indian government might have to go hat in hand to the upstream state and say, Hey, it's your next door neighbor. Yeah, if you could use a little less water than the Supreme Court said you had a right to, and you know, just let the rest flow down to us, well boy, that would really just be great. We'll see how that whole planned implementation process works out, but in the meantime, people are still not happy with this solution. The other problem is, the total amount of water in the country is still disappearing. Because you're replacing the years and years of stored groundwater accessible by wells that has been depleted to almost zero with redistributed river water that is already being almost entirely used by the country, that's only going to be sustainable if you make some serious structural changes to your economy. The larger problem is what do you do with 600 million far, uh, people whose way of life and income depends on groundwater that's now disappeared. Yeah, this river redirecting strategy is like trying to fix global warming by turning up the air conditioning in every building. You might not feel the effect immediately, but you're not addressing the underlying issue. Because of this, people are pushing for more purification plants, more collection facilities, and taking measures to fill these groundwater reservoirs. Of course, these are all long-term solutions, and when a whole New York-sized city is out of water, probably better to redirect the river temporarily before you start a whole infrastructure debate. 
People are wary though because the three planks that were laid out by this new water agency had none that seemed to address this literally underlying issue of extremely depleted groundwater. The ministry will focus on clean drinking water, Namami Gange project to clean up the Ganga and international and interstate water disputes. All things considered, it's hard to complain about any of those priorities. Clean drinking water to everyone? Bah humbug. We need to focus on storage. Activists with bigger cojones than me might say that though. Like this guy. What is the government's big time plan? It's not just the access to drinking water which is the current crisis of India. It's the availability of fresh water that, that is the main, main crisis. What can I say though? It's complicated. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Join us next episode when we're talking about the US releasing our new plan for peace in the Middle East. Gee, I wonder if it involves invading Iran. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent non-partisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the left of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.